Hey everyone, I'm Rob in VR, and welcome to another episode of VR Review, my weekly virtual news wrap-up. Brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, the best crowdfunding site for content creators. GameStop is reporting its pre-orders for the PlayStation VR had its quickest sellout in GameStop history, selling out of its allocated stock within five minutes of listing it online. This is echoed by stories of Amazon running out in 10 minutes, Target and Walmart running out within 24 hours. While this is great news and proves there is demand for the product, we don't have hard numbers as to how many were actually sold. The PlayStation VR is compatible with the PlayStation 4, and with over 40 million PlayStation 4s already sold, the headset selling at a price lower than the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, odds are it will sell pretty well. Leap Motion has released its interaction engine, will let you more easily interact with objects in virtual reality. If you're not familiar with Leap Motion, it was introduced in 2012 as a way to have touchscreen-like interactions with an ordinary screen. The sensor, sitting on your desk or built into your keyboard, tracks your hand and finger movements, allowing you to gesture at your screen to do things like scroll through web pages, draw, play games, and sign digital documents. The device never really caught on for desktop use, but has found a new life as a hand tracker for virtual reality. Connected to the front of a VR headset, the Leap Motion does a great job of tracking your hand and finger movements so your hands can be represented by virtual ones in front of you. The only problem is the game engines that most VR experiences are made with don't treat your virtual hands any differently than they do any other virtual object. The normal behavior for when two objects collide is for them to bounce away from each other. So while these virtual hands are fine for pushing items or cradling them in your hand, they won't let you pick up, hold, or throw objects. What the interaction engine does is allow for certain objects to ignore the usual behavior of colliding with your hands. Instead, your virtual hands can pass into these objects and using natural gestures, allow you to grab, hold, and throw objects around. While this seems less accurate, it allows for interactions with objects that more meet your expectations and are less frustrating. Other objects like buttons or doors that you may want to keep with the default collision behavior can be left unchanged. Demos show improved results grasping, stacking, and throwing objects in a natural looking way. This is an early beta of the engine with the company stating it works well with cubes and spheres around one to two inches in size, but smaller and elongated objects are known to be problematic. Currently no consumer VR headset has a built-in hand tracking system using the Leap Motion. The company does sell a developer's bundle that includes a mount compatible with the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive with a 15 foot cable extender. Also, the OSVR headset has an integrated Leap Motion faceplate coming soon. Overall, hand tracking can give you a more realistic feeling of presence than holding a motion controller, and is something I hope we see more of in the future. While the new Leap Motion system aims to make it easier to pick up objects in virtual reality, you don't actually feel anything when you grasp or hold a virtual object. Dexter Robotics intends to change this with its Dexmo exoskeleton gloves. The wireless glove uses small robotic arms attached to each of your fingertips to track your fingers' positions and provide variable force feedback. This means that not only can you feel the size and shape of a virtual object, you would be able to feel its physical properties. Use a certain amount of force to pick up and hold a rubber duck, squeeze it harder to make it squeak, and feel it spring back into shape after. These gloves are just out of the prototype stage, so it may be quite a while before they're a consumer product but a great glimpse of what the future of VR might look like. If you like my videos and they've helped you keep up with these new technologies, please consider joining my Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help keep me making these videos for you. If you can't afford to make it a financial commitment, please subscribe to the channel. Subscription numbers make all the difference in how YouTube supports what I do. Thanks for watching.